Check out this little waterway. Now that Gabe is an official graduated graduate, I'm I'm kind of trying to encourage him to uh, join the Navy, do what I did. But he's not so sure yet. He just wants to uh, be set and get a fancy new four-door Jeep like everybody else has and all the other stuff. I told him junk like that will come in time, you know. I know it's not junk to a to someone young, but uh, can y'all see okay? I took my lab, I put my glasses back on. I can't see the bottom. What I want, because he wants to go, he wants to travel, he wants to see places. But you got to be pretty loaded to do that this early in life. And uh, I told him, I said, son, I said, I saw more of the world. There's copper. Copper's always in a ball with leaves on it. I have so many rolls like this. I'm trying to get that. Uh, flavor off of it, the creek hair. But I told him, I said, son, I saw more of the world before I turned 22 than most people see their entire lives. And even though I was in the Navy, it wasn't by floating around on a ship. And I got a high respect for those men and women who do that, that is a hard life. But I had a good recruiter. I did fair enough on the ASFAB to go into the medical field. I loved it. I went straight to California from Alabama. I thought that was a Frisbee. That's not a Frisbee. You know what that is? That's one of those covers you put on the eye of a stove, right? I think. Where'd my copper go? I better man purse this before we forget it. Add it to the mini rolls. Now I did have the benefit of uh, doing a little junior high and high school action in, uh, or middle school and high school in Germany. So that got me kind of hooked early on, but but then I came back to the United States and graduated high school and worked in a company. About a month, I said, man, what am I doing? And I joined the Navy. And I went to the medical field and went to California, did my training, went to the Naval Health Sciences School and all that stuff. And I said, okay, I gotta do something more than this. That was great. This must be the uh, rare creek monkey following me around. So I wanted to, uh, I wanted to go to Japan. And I may have told you all this story. The only way to get to Japan, being in the Navy, other than going to a big Navy base up North Japan, which I didn't know anything about at the time. You had to do the Fleet Marine Force, do FMF training in Camp Pendleton. That was awesome. You're talking about some Marines getting joy out of thinking wearing, slap wearing out a sailor. Those guys loved it. But it was awesome. I learned a lot. That's a brand new 
If we could get that in our man purse, we would. But we can't, so we ain't. So from there, I went after running through the hills of Camp Pendleton in the summer, which was mighty toasty. Went to Japan. I got put with a Marine Corps unit, and from there we deployed all over the place. It was awesome. I was their, uh, their medic. I've told y'all this story a few times. Oh, I think I remember this spot. We have been here. We need to go that way. So we did more training on Okinawa, learned more weapons, more triage, things like that, before we get shipped out again. We went to Korea, Team Spirit. Trained with the Rock Army, which is pretty cool. When you're done doing that, you're all the more thankful that you're in the United States military. But I told him, I said, what was so cool about it? Even though I was in the Navy, I was like the, my own grandpa kind of thing. You know, you stood out. You were their medic. They respected you and took care of you. And you respected them and took care of them. You weren't just another grunt marine. You weren't just another swabby deckhand sailor. Again, nothing wrong with either one. Everybody's got their place. Okay, I guess we'll take this one. Critter runneth. It was awesome. You make friends for life. You make friends for life even if you never see them again. Look. Told you little tiny bottles. Always ride the top. You're gonna have to hold your ears in a minute because this man person, because um, train cometh. I've got, well, believe it or not, all, all the friends I made, you never know where they all end up, but there was only one. There's another bottle. There was only one that I still keep up with his good friends in Texas. You wanna watch a little bit of this train? Oh, it's all busted up. All right, turn your uh, speakers down. I don't think I'm gonna stand here for the train to come over. That kind of gives me a little creeps out. Where'd the creep go? Speaking of creeps out. It's over there. They moved it. And the lovely mimosa. I love these things. Even when they're covered in ants, I like them. Where is it? I hear two different trains honking at each other coming from different directions. We gotta figure out, we gotta figure out where we're gonna get. Where is it? Oh, it's way over there. I thought it was gonna be right here. We got cheated. So I'm trying to encourage them to do that. I went to Japan with two duffel bags. There's another bottle. A, uh, 
Looks like an aftershave, isn't it? You know what we think that's what that is? It's one of those that takes you about a year to get everything out of it. Because the hole's real small. Hey, if you're bored, see if you can figure out what was in that bottle. It's like a building, doesn't it? A little harvest. So that's what I'm trying to do. Encourage him to go see the world. He could retire. Let's see, he's uh He is I forgot how old he is. But either way, before he's 40 he could retire. And do something else. Or stay in, get a degree while he's in. I got most of my degree while I was in. And you could get out and do something else. But I'm not pushing him. I'm just talking to him about it. Do y'all remember this spot yet? Yeah, you might remember it up here. I think it was winter the last time we came. I believe we found a wallet in here last time. I don't know if this is the same spot. Getting a little deep, a little stagnant right here. Getting closer to the train. It's all over me, I'm for sure. Nah. Yeah, I think we had to get out and climb over right here because even when I had my other boots on, it was deep. Too deep to wade through. Which is a bummer. Yeah, it is. <sighs> Once the train's gone, it's almost silent again. I'm wiping the sweat off my face. I guess we're, oh, there's a phone. That's a classic. Nice and clean. Okay, Google. It's silent again. Other than my phone ringing. The walk back, I looked. Where'd it go? I saw a bottle. Oh, there it is. That one's kind of neat, isn't it? It has words upon, upon it. I don't know what this is. 
it's a patent. My phone ringeth again. I've been getting these calls from uh, Sirius Radio for your car. And they're pretty slick. They, uh, they make it an Alabama area code. And they call. And they start talking. And you realize, oh, okay. And I tell them, no, I'm not interested, thank you. And then they call again. A different Alabama number than the Alabama area code. So I blocked them both. Okay, that didn't work. So now I'm on about call number 10, and I'm not exaggerating. I stopped the lady up front after she was just chit-chatting a little bit. I said, is this about serious radio? She said, yes. And I just said, can y'all take me off the list? I don't, I don't want it. I don't, I don't want to listen to serious radio or either kidding around radio or anything. And uh, she said, yes. She said, but it will take, I, I don't know, she said, five to seven days or five to seven years for your for your name for your number to actually be removed she said you're still gonna receive some calls so that's what that call was a second ago you got an Alabama number that I just didn't answer but I didn't take time to block it the problem with that is when you have offspring, friends or family that you're caring for or taking care of, you don't know if there's some serious situation and they're calling from somebody else's phone. So it kind of, but I guess if it's serious, it'll leave you a voice massage. You know, we came through that one. Let's go back through this one. I'm trying to make sure there's no giant hole there. Because you can't see them until your leg is in them. It's just hard not to play the acoustic game when you're in there. Make all kind of noises like you're six when you first got your driver's license and you drive through a big tunnel and you start honking just so you can hear it. Which side did we come up? I can't decide. I don't know. We go this side. There's more little bottles in here. Tiny bottles in here. Okay, this is not the side we came up. No way. I've managed to keep my phalanges dry till this moment. I think I saw a fork in there, but wait, wait. Let me see if I can find this fork. Hold on. I stir it all up. Ha! Huh. Is a fork. Consider yourself harvested. And then three steps later. Another one. Harvested. See, we're back to that 
exquisite looking railroad tie. Okay, we're gonna do a quick look right here and then game over. nothing else I do hear the rare creek monkey thanks for watching my videos